When I first started practicing law, everybody had the standard possession order, which is basically your first third and fifth weekend from Friday 6 p.m. until Sunday 6 p.m. And as time went by, people said, I want more time than that with my children, the non-custodial parent. And so the legislature came up with an extended standard visitation, which is from the time school lets out on Friday until school starts again on Monday morning. But even then, parents said, you know, that doesn't work for my situation because, for instance, if a parent is doing shift work, um, if they're a firefighter or a nurse, then they may be working the whole weekend and then have the whole next week off. And so we learn to craft specialized and customized visitation plans based on the work schedule of the parents. And then other parents said, I really want 50% of the time with my children, and I don't feel like the standard possession order gives me 50% of the time. And so they began with different methods such as week on, week off. There's something called 223 where you have two days and then you have three days and then you have two days with your children and it alternates every other week. Sometimes people will do two weeks on and two weeks off. When it comes to alternative visitation plan issues, you really have to look at whether the parents are able to co-parent. How will they resolve disputes between them? And also they have to be willing to live close to each other. They need to live in the same school district to get the kids to school on time every day. They need to be able to communicate regarding homework and um, things like that so that the children have a consistent homework schedule. Beyond just how much time you have to spend with the children, you also have to look at parental rights who has the right to make educational decisions, whether the child goes to public school or private school or whether they need special education. And you also need to look at the right to make medical decisions and whether the child should have counseling or um, see a psychiatrist or have maybe certain kinds of surgery. And so those decisions make a big difference in whether we have joint parenting or whether one parent is the one that's going to make all of those decisions. And as far as visitation plans, sometimes it affects child support and sometimes it doesn't. It may be that even though you share equal time with the children, you're still paying child support. Writing a customized visitation plan is actually very complicated because you need to be able to put down in writing exactly what the scenario would be in a way that the judge can interpret whether you have followed that order or not. And even though you may understand what you intend, putting that into words is sometimes difficult and it needs to be in the order in such a specific way to make it enforceable. If your visitation plan isn't being followed, you need to think about whether or not to have an enforcement hearing. And that would be a separate lawsuit that you file to bring that parent into court. But you need to try and communicate with that parent as best you can first. See if you can work it out without court intervention because the court should be a last resort in trying to enforce a visitation plan. And the judge wants to see that you are flexible, that you were accommodating the other parent, and that you were doing whatever it took so that the child would have a good relationship with both parents. Visitation plans are an integral part of divorce when you have children, so I've been crafting visitation plans throughout my whole career. I believe that people hire my firm to be their representation because we listen to people and they come in here they feel comfortable knowing that they are going to be heard and they're not just a number. My current and past clients would say that this firm really cares about them and that we really take care of the details so that uh, everything is put into their decree that needs to be in there or into their order that needs to be there. We believe client communication is very important. Every time that we hear something from opposing counsel or from the other party, we will notify the client about what's going on in their case. We return phone calls that day or the very next day, and we check our emails several times a day. We're a small firm, and the advantage of working with a small firm is that you get to know all of the staff of the firm, and all of the staff of the firm gets to know you. 
My law firm is different from other firms because we really make a point to make sure that everybody on staff knows what's going on with all the cases. We sit down together and go over all the cases together as a staff and we um, pray for our clients and we pray with our clients. If you're looking for an alternative visitation plan, you need to come to your initial consultation prepared to tell your attorney what you have discussed with your spouse, what you have tried in the past, and what the status quo is. If you're trying to change the status quo and do something different from what you've been doing, then we have to have a really good reason to show the judge why what you've been doing isn't working and why you need to do something different. We also need to look at things like special needs of your child, if your child has special education needs, special medical needs, um, or if your child really just needs to have um, a lot more attention with their homework.